Hi Toy Tractor Times fans, I'm at the 2022 National Farm Toy Show hosted by Toy Farmer. I'm here with Jim Gorman from Hillsboro, Ohio. Jim's been here many times and congratulations on taking second place in a gold uh, Massey Ferguson four-wheel drive trophy. Well Jim, uh, you've got a great display here. Uh, what can you tell me about it? Well, uh, it started as a uh, from the time the Egyptians and Romans uh, cutting their wheat, rice, whatever, crops to uh, uh, feed themselves, grind it into their food. Uh, so I started to do that, uh, following it through with the, them up to the time, and then to the cutting the wheat with the binders, and then thrashing it with your thrashing machines to uh, combining it with your combines up till today. So. Your different crops, uh, wheat, oats, rice, beans. So you you have built all these classic combines in a, in a thresher out here uh, in 116 scale, which are wonderful pieces. And I guess we can take a look at, these are kind of factories on wheels. And what you've done is shown an example of what these machines can harvest. We, we have corn, uh, oats, oats, millet, wheat, Soybeans, uh, white rice, brown rice, small red beans, navy beans, great northern beans, and there's a lot more, you know, uh, crops uh, that can be harvested with the harvesters. Uh, well, it's, uh, the combine is a factory on wheel to process grain. And it's amazing to a big machine, and you come out with these little clean, small seeds that uh, people use to eat, to feed themselves and everything. Sure. It's what, totally amazing to me, how I go through a machine and up to the day, you know, like a 45 foot header mm -hmm. can be all that compacted in until you get little small seeds out of it with no chaff, no uh, trash in it. No, and the, the first combine, self-propelled combine, was the Gleaner in 1923, yep. which is celebrating 100 years. And we can see here you have some Alice Chalmers. Alice Chalmers bought Gleaner yep. in 1955, but you have uh, made a self-propelled Alice and some pull types that were tractor powered. Yes. The uh, uh, Alice Chalmers 40 was our first one with the 20 inch cat, uh, mechanical speed, 60, 66. Uh, and then he went to a 66 with a tandem match from the bigger bin, 72, 90, and he was at the Auger feed. Then he had the SP100 to self propelled with the, the, the operated with, it had a WD45 tractor engine that propelled it. And when they went, then Gleaner took over. So, so this kind of takes us from 1938. Looking at all these models all the way up to 1959, 1957. Yes. And uh, one of the things when you build these, they're not just a model. You have all the components inside as well. Yeah. So you can see them. You gotta have the cylinders. You gotta have all that kind of stuff. You know, to me. Uh, does this uh, does this end piece turn up as well? Is that? Yeah. Or? Yeah. That's where your your trash and everything comes out when you know. The, Plotter, whatever you want to call it, comes out. Uh, your uh, grain bin, your over folds up for transport. Uh, you know, different things like that. For me, everything has got to uh, be flexible and work. Overs turn. Uh, you know, it all has to be like the real machine. So another. Uh Harvestry right here is McCormick Deering, and McCormick and Deering were leaders in uh, the binder business, and yes. then they formed International Harvester, and they brought their first combines out in 1942, uh, as far as the self-propelled, and then also pull types earlier than that. Yes, yeah, the uh, it only had a 52-inch cut on it, so uh, and it was pull type. You can. Uh, used tractor or team of horses back then, you know, because some of them even had the uh, little motors on. Okay. 
So you can, two inch cut, that's a good lawnmower today. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Compared to today, you know, uh, when you're talking 35, 40 foot heads on some of your combines, it's amazing. So here we have the SB. 123, which I think is neat, is that it just kind of had like a gravity box bin up there instead of yeah. an unloading auger and it poured out. You didn't have to worry about the belt clicking when you went to unload it, but uh, once you uh, raised your lever, the grain would just pour out into your truck bed or whatever you had. And it closed back down, but uh, it had a regular international truck motor. Okay. So, and this one had dual wheels. That didn't really come along until the mid '80s on most combines. No, you uh, had to have that for your rotation and everything. Sure. But, uh, it all the cylinder has got to be inside. All the chains here. And chains. Drive all the All the detail I can cut the piece is what I want. So. Very nice. And then Oliver was another big brand in harvesting. There's the Oliver 18, which is like one of the combines that I owned quite a few years ago. And it's the cylinders, everything in it, you know. And then the uh, PTO shaft, it was PTO driven, so you had to have the little universal joints for the PTO that you make a 316 brass rod. Every, everything that's all the detail. Then we've got the SB33 Oliver. It's built from 48 to 53. It's yeah. been a big combine in its day. It was, a, it was a big one. It was a good one. But, uh, you know, it's uh, the Oliver motor on it uh, and everything. It's just uh, one guy in the neighborhood had, so I had to build it. And one of my favorite the classic combine lines is the case combines. You have a K600 and SP12 and a M2, M2 full type. And M2 has SC case tractor engine on it to operate it. The SP12 has a DC case tractor motor to, to run it. The 600 has a case motor on it to operate it at self propelled. And there's uh, somewhere over 600 uh, pieces wow. in it to build it. I kept track of uh, pieces that I've made each individual piece. And looking at the M2, we can see it's neat. It's got the engine right behind the uh, cutting head. We can see the basket air return yeah. up there on top. And just a nice lineup of case machines. Yeah, it's amazing, though, the location of the power that they use to operate the machines where they engineers place it, you know, sure. why they place them in the different positions, on the sides, on the top, yeah. uh, behind the grain bins and everything. It's just amazing to me. All different ideas. How, how they transfer power from one point to another. Then you have a big lineup of Minneapolis Moline combines back here. Yeah. So I guess we'll look at that pull type over there first, a Model 69. Uh, that's the, one of the first, the first pull type of the canvas speed that they had. And that was uh, PTO driven pull type. 2088 was the auger feed, was PTO driven. Uh, 88 is cut on it. And I needed the Delta 12, uh, the SP-168, for a 12 foot cut. It's a 1955 to 57 combine. Got that big tub up there. Jim even has the battery on there, and we can see the engine compartment. And then Minneapolis Moline really revolutionized harvesting with the the uni system here, which became new idea later. Yeah. But we can see the, uh, the power unit and all the belts and the engine and the wheels that Jim built. And then you have your stands that held the uh, corn picking unit and the uh, combine, the harvestor. And back in the days when this was first built, a lot of small grains were combined, but ear corn, corn was picked on the ear because they didn't have a good drying system yet to handle a shelled corn from a combine. 
And I want to share here that Jim has this wonderful piece of artwork on the display. Again, showing that early time from the Egyptians and Romans. Um, hand harvesting with a scythe and thrashing the grain by hand. And then the McCormick Reaper coming along over here and binding the grain. And then all the way to the steam powered thrashers and then the pull type combines there with the John Deere. So here we have kind of the early stationary combine, uh, John Deere 1938 Thrasher. So they, they called it a 28 by 46. Yeah, the 28 cylinder with a 46 inch uh, separating area inside. Okay. Uh, it uh, come around, the grain come out, but it had the wear so you know how many bushel of grain as you was harvesting, you stretched out your oats or wheat. And when it was spring, it would flip up and dump in the over, would run it out into your thing. And That's really neat. Today we have back. computers. <laughs> yes. And then to run your straw out to your uh, straw pile would go out to the side. But it was operated with a steam engine or a tractor. With Here we can see the pulley bolt. Uh, the, pulley, the pulley belts wrapped yeah. up there. Your conveyor to feed the bound grain in there. Uh, walkers pulling the grain into the feeder housing is all uh, scratch built out of brass. Uh, so here we have a John Deere number no. nine combine, pull type. It was one of the first ones with a 12 foot head, uh, pull type self propelled, or not self propelled, but pull. And it had a Hercules six cylinder flathead motor on it. Okay. Straw spreader on the back. Yeah. yeah straw spreader. And then the and it had the gravity unloading old tank on it. But it took an operator to run the tractor to pull it, but then an operator stood here and raised the head up and down in case of rocks or stumps out the field as you Looks like you're the captain of the ship there with that yeah. with the wheel. And then Massey Harris is the company that really brought the self-propelled combine to the market in the 1940s. Here we can see a Massey Harris 35 built from 44 to 51 and a Massey Harris SP Clipper built 44 to 51. And the motor is a little Continental F140 on the little 35, which with an eight foot head was a little bit uh, too much uh, combine there for the motor. But then the clipper, when they built the clipper, the motor is clear in under the belly of the combine. Well, that's a place for it. <laughs> I mean, it would be a pair to uh, change points, clean the carburetor, or anything, or something like that. But, uh, yeah, it's a very compact combine. But they had a clipper pull type, which I haven't built yet. I've still got some more combines to build. I'm not ready to quit. That's a great history. So what? What is uh, the next project you'd like to complete? Well, uh, the next one is probably I got to complete my Alice Chalmers, but for that I want to build an egg wiener uh, to go with. But then at the same time, there's, I still have to build some full type canvas speed to go with these others. I won't just want to build as many as I can. Yeah, sure. I'm not ready to. Uh, Give up, but then there's other projects I've been working on too. So whatever uh, idea pops in my head, we'll be building something different. Sure. Well, it's all all wonderful projects, and thank you for sharing it here at the National. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. And if you would like to attend the National Farm Toy Show, it's always the first full week in November in Dyersville, Iowa, hosted by the Toy Farmer. And we thank you for watching here on Toy Tractor Times YouTube, where there are hundreds of videos on farm displays and custom projects just like these. As always, thank you for watching.